Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, if you can already tell by the title, I am going to be talking about all of the books that I want to read or are on my TBR list that are set in Russia and Ukraine, or formerly known as the Soviet Union. So I've mentioned this in a couple videos. I am half Russian and half Ukrainian. My dad is originally from the Moscow area in Russia. My mom is from Odessa, Ukraine. They immigrated to the United States in 1989. I was born in America, so I'm technically an American, but I'm culturally half Russian, half Ukrainian. But basically, I love reading books that have anything to do with those places, that setting, or have to do with that time period of either the revolution or the Cold War, anything to do with Soviet Russia stuff. Oh, and I'll also mention that I both have visited Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Odessa, Ukraine before. So I've been to those places with my family, and that even more so makes me want to read more books set in those places because I've been there, so I kind of have a feel of what it's like obviously modern not set in the past but still I have a very big list of books that I want to read. I've separated it into fiction and nonfiction, so I'm going to try to do this quickly. I won't go into too much depth into every book that I want to read, but the general gist of what it's about and why it piqued my interest. So jumping into it, I'll start with fiction. The majority of these will be historical fiction, just because historically these will be set in the past or set in Russia, so it just makes sense. The first book on my list, and I'm a little ashamed that I haven't read it yet because I feel like everyone else has, is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. This is the very popular beloved book club book. It's about a gentleman in the 1920s who is on house arrest in Moscow because of the revolution. Some people I know have said it's a little bit boring because like nothing happens. This guy is just literally on house arrest for like 30 years. And other people say that they love it because of like how it's written and the witty humor and everything. But all I know is that I absolutely want to read it. So the next book on my list is a newer release, but it's called Our Woman in Moscow by Beatrice Williams. So this one is a book that came out this year and it is a historical thriller. I think it's a bit of a spy novel. The little blurb says that it is about an American diplomat woman and her children who live in London that mysteriously disappear and vanish. And then several years later, another person receives a postcard supposedly from this person from Russia. So maybe she was like kidnapped and taken into the Soviet Union and they're trying to help her release her. Something along the lines of spy mystery totally up my alley. I feel like I would love this book. Next up is The Revolution of Marina M by Jeanette Fitch. This book is very well praised by Brittany from Literarily Smitten and the way that she talks about this book has made me want to read it. This is a duology and it's quite a chunky one but it's this epic saga set during the revolution in St. Petersburg so it starts in 1916 and I think Marina the main character has to deal with love and loss and betrayal and war and all of the crazy tragic stuff that happens in Russia during that time period. So I'm very much looking forward to picking this up. Next up, I really want to read Comrade Koba. So I love when this happens, but I was just perusing the new fiction shelves at my library and found this book. I've heard absolutely no one talk about this book or say anything about it. So I read the blurb and had to check it out from the library immediately. It says, Leon Rosenthal, 10 and a half, intellectually precocious and possessing a disarming candor, is suddenly alone after the death of his nuclear physicist father and the arrest of his mother during the Stalinist purge of Jewish doctors. Now on his own and hiding from the NKVD in the secret rooms of the House on the Embankment, the massive building in Moscow where many Soviet officials and apparatchiks live and work, Leon starts to explore. One day after following a passageway, Leon meets Koba, an old man whose apartment is protected by several guards. Koba is a high-ranking Soviet official with troubling insight into the thoughts of Comrade Stalin. So I was immediately drawn to this book, not only because it's set in Russia and during that time, but because I read City of Thieves by David Benioff last year, one of my all-time favorite books, Forever Will Be. Love this book. It's also kind of witty following these teenage boys on a mission, hiding from the NKVD, and this book gave me very similar feelings and vibes, so I'm very excited and have high hopes for this one. Next up, I want to read The Union of Synchronized Swimmers by Christina Sandu. This is a book that I heard from Sick of Reading's channel. She reads a lot of great historical fiction. This is a shorter like novella historical fiction about the Soviet synchronized swimming team on their way to the Olympics, and I feel like I have to read it soon this summer, obviously because the Olympics start in like a couple days, so 
totally in theme with the summer so i feel like this will be really fun the next one that made it on the list is disappearing earth by julia phillips this book is a mystery literary thriller i think it's set in present day and the blurb says that on one august afternoon on the shoreline of the northeastern edge of russia two sisters are abducted in the ensuing weeks then months the police investigation turns up nothing set on the remote siberian peninsula of kamchatka disappearing earth draws us into the world of an astonishing cast of characters all connected by an unfathomable crime. I'm really interested by that one. Then I have four books that are all are either set in St. Petersburg or have to do with the Romanov family. So the first one is Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. This is set in St. Petersburg. Kristen Hanna is a very beloved and popular historical fiction novelist and I want to read this book this year. Hopefully we'll get to it during the winter time but it follows two sisters in St. Petersburg. I don't really know what happens but it's gonna be good. Another one that's been on my radar for a while is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simmons. This is a historical romance, technically. Don't read a lot of romance. And I heard that it's very steamy, which I also don't read a lot of at all. But I also heard that it's like really good and like this incredible historical, beautiful love story. And my sister have read it, a lot of my friends have read it. So I was like, I feel like I wanna read this someday. It's a trilogy. I don't know when I'll get around to it. It's also set in the 1940s during the war. I mean, there's just like a lot of things that I feel like I will love about it and I'm not, totally opposed to historical romance because I really love Outlander, also one of my favorite books, but still, I'm a little apprehensive. <laughs> then I really want to read I Was Anastasia by Ariel Lahan. So I absolutely love Anastasia the musical. I did see it on Broadway with my friends when we were visiting New York with the original cast and it was amazing. I listen to the soundtrack way too often, but I also really like the, it's not Disney, I think it's DreamWorks movie. Anastasia, also really good. So there's this myth that the lost princess Anastasia, the youngest member, I think, of the Romanov family, who was all killed during the revolution, survived somehow mysteriously. So this book is about that myth, and it is about this woman who is trying to say that she is the lost princess Anastasia. I've heard good things about it, so we'll see. Then on my list in the same vein is The Romanov Empress, a novel of Zarina Maria Fyodorovna. So this book follows the mother of of Russia's last Tsar, Maria Fyodorovna, and her life and how she witnessed the fall of the Romanov family. Also probably historical and tragic, interesting perspective. I want to read more about it. Now some people might be like, oh, what about all the Russian classics? I don't know. I don't think I'll ever read War and Peace or Crime and Punishment because they are too philosophical for me and I don't really care about that, even though they're probably amazing novels and were amazing during that time. But like, do I need to read them? Probably not. I actually was just talking about this recently with my parents because they obviously went to school in the Soviet Union and have to read those books. And I was talking about it with my mom and she said she hated them because she's like they were too dense and boring and like no one in school liked reading those books, which is interesting. So I'm like a little bit like maybe I should read them one day, but I'm not gonna worry about it. But the one book that I do wanna read that is a classic is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I've had this book on my shelf for way too long. I really need to read this. I don't know when I will because I'm incredibly intimidated by how thick this is. I watched the Keira Knightley movie forever ago, don't know anything about the story, forgot what happens. And I feel like the other thing that's not making me very excited about this book is I, if I'm remembering correctly, it's mostly about an affair and I really don't like reading about that. That's my hesitation, but I, but I do want to read it. It's on my TBR. I have this book. Don't know when I'll get to it. I have four fiction books left on my list and they're all set in Ukraine. The first one is The Nesting Dolls by Alina Adams. This book came on my radar during Historathon in February of this year. A lot of booktubers that I follow had to read a book with a multi-generational like family saga and this book kind of fit that bill. This book spans like 80 years or so. So it starts in the 1930s in Odessa and it jumps to Siberia and Brighton Beach and it follows an epic family saga. Again, totally up my alley. Sounds like something that I would really enjoy. The next one on my list is A Bend in the Stars by Rachel Berenbaum. I originally thought this was set in Odessa, which is why I put it in this Ukraine category, but reading the blurb, I don't think it is actually, so that's my bad. But this blurb says that this is an epic love story and a heart-pounding journey across World War I era Russia about an ambitious young doctor and her scientist brother in a race against Einstein to solve one of the greatest mysteries of the universe. Thought it was in Odessa, it's not, but it's still a book that I wanna read. Next up, 
Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Saffron Four. I read this book in my Try a Chapter video where I read the first chapter. I don't know how I feel about this book because it was quite crude from the first few pages of it. Basically, I think this book is the author, Jonathan Saffron Four, went to Ukraine to write a book about his grandfather and he hires a young guide to drive him around and show him around. And I think he ends up writing like a biographical fictionalized version of his guide's story is what I'm picking up from the first few pages of this book. But it's set in Ukraine, which is cool. And this book is actually the two colors of the Ukrainian flag. So that's kind of fun. And finally in the fiction category is The Last Green Valley by Mark Sullivan. So this author wrote Beneath the Scarlet Sky, which is actually a book that I need to read this summer for the Adventures in History book club. This book is set in Ukraine during World War II. The little verb says, in late March 1944, as Stalin's forces push into Ukraine, young Emil and Adeline Martel must make a terrible decision. Do they wait for the Soviet bear's intrusion and risk being sent to Siberia, or do they reluctantly follow the wolves, murderous Nazi officers who have pledged to protect pure blood Germans. The Martels are one of many families of German heritage whose ancestors have farmed in Ukraine for more than a century. But after already living under Stalin's horrifying regime, Emil and Adeline decide they must run and retreat from the land with the wolves they despise to escape the Soviets and go in search of freedom. Sounds very epic and very intense and really good. All right, let's jump into nonfiction. I have quite a list as well. The first book is 10 Days That Shook the World by John Reed. This is a journalistic account, a first person chronicle by the author. He was there in 1917 in St. Petersburg and witnessed the Russian Revolution and how Lenin instigated the murder of the monarchy, the Romanov family, and seized power himself and created this revolution. I know a little bit about that, but I want to know more. And this sounds really good. The next book I want to pick up is A Backpack, A Bear, and Eight Crazy Crates of Vodka by Lev Galinkin. This book is a memoir and it says, Lev Galinkin was born in Kharkov, Ukraine in 1980 during the twilight of the Cold War and the Soviet Union. It was an era filled with menacing black cars and midnight disappearances, KGB informants at every window and eruptions of everyday violence and virulent anti-Semitism. Lev's parents wanted a better life for him and his sister, but the borders were sealed tight and the dream of America was out of reach. Then in late 1989, a loophole opened for a potential and permanent exit and the Galinkins along with hundreds of thousands of Soviet Jews would risk everything to make it through, but they had to hurry. The border was rumored to be closing on December 31st. This book says to be vivid, darkly comic, and poignant. Sounds very interesting and a memoir that I would totally love. And my parents aren't Jewish, but they did immigrate in 1989 to the United States as religious refugees fleeing the Soviet Union. So I feel like this is very close to home. Another nonfiction on my radar is Catherine the Great Portrait of a Woman by Robert K. Massey. This is a book that I heard a book Olive praise and talk about and also Brittany from Literarily Smitten. Both of those booktubers, which I'll link down below, love books that also have to do with Russia and set in Russia, so I've gotten a few recommendations from them. But this book is all about Catherine the Great, who became the Queen of Russia, and she came to power because of a military coup, and she was very intelligent and did a lot of strategic things to hold her power and she changed a lot of stuff for the better for Russia during that time period. Excited to learn more about her. Then I have two books on Chernobyl that I want to read about. The first one is Midnight in Chernobyl, The Untold Story of the World's Greatest Nuclear Disaster by Adam Higginbotham. And the other one is Voices from Chernobyl, The Oral History of a Nuclear Disaster by Svetlana Alexeyevich. So both of these books have to do with Chernobyl, which was a very epic nuclear disaster that happened in Ukraine in the late 1980s. And to this day, that reads region is evacuated and completely abandoned. No one lives there because of all of the radiation poisoning. There was a lot of cover-up around this event because of the implications of it and obviously the Soviet Union is very proud and they didn't want to show the world that they made a mistake and how many people were affected and killed by it. It's very interesting. I really want to read those two books and I want to watch the Chernobyl series on HBO because I heard that was really good too. Another nonfiction I really want to read is Red Famine, Stalin's War on Ukraine. Now I just recently read the Ukrainian and Russian Notebooks by Igor, and this is a graphic novel about some very important Russian and Ukrainian events. And this book mentioned the Holodomor, which is the great famine that Stalin inflicted on the Ukrainian people, essentially starving the entire region of Ukraine. This book brought up a lot of the events that I wasn't even aware of, and I really want to read more about them. So that's why I want to read Red Famine, because I feel like it'll be a lot more detailed about that time in history and what happened. I have two left, a book that I really want to get to soon is The Spy and the Traitor, The Greatest Espionage Story of the Cold War by Ben 
McIntyre. I really want to listen to this book because I absolutely love the movie The Courier. I watched this movie in theaters, I think in like March, April, one of the first movies I watched in theaters post COVID and it was so good. And the storyline is very much based on true events and what happened and this nonfiction describes those events. And finally, I want to read Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking, a memoir of food and longing by Anya von Bremsen. The little blurb says that a celebrated food writer captures the flavors of the Soviet experience in a sweeping, tragic comic, multi-generational memoir that brilliantly illuminates the history and culture of a vanished empire. Sounds right up my alley and one of my best friends gave this five stars. She loved it, so I feel like I will too. All right, that is my long TBR list of all the books that I wanna read that have to do with Russia and Ukraine. Please let me know if you have any books that you've read that you've absolutely loved that are set in those places in that time period. Leave those down below because although my list is long, I will always keep adding to it because I want to read more books that are about my people. Thanks so much for watching and for tuning in. I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye!